Oh, we've got Rages. Hello, hello, hello. I don't know if anybody's watching just yet, but I can see that we've got plenty of people signed up and ready to watch. So you're in the right place this evening. I hope you've got a cup of tea, pen and paper, you never know. So we're just waiting for a few people to get in the room and start some hellos and we can get going. Um, yeah, I hope you've all had a lovely day. It's been an interesting day all around. We've had some exciting times. Typical technology ups and downs for the day, but that's what you do. So uh, yeah, good. We'll just wait and see who's, uh, who's coming along. Won't be long. <laughs> we're nearly at seven o'clock. We're, 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 we're getting club, but we're getting about a minute. I know, about a minute. I know we'll be there soon. Don't want to upset anybody who's late. No. I don't want to upset anybody. So yeah, I can see people coming in. People must have got the early train home. I can see people signing up, getting ready, watching online. Um, so we'll get going in a little while once we've everybody's got themselves settled and comfy. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the whole how we sort of do it all in a moment. But, you know, at the end, if you're in Google and you know how to use the Google system, then very simply, you can actually have the Q&A and request some questions, see if I can answer them for you. But put some details up there if you want to have a chat. And like I say, we'll get going very soon. So, cup of tea every time. Maybe biscuit. Biscuits, tea, not your, not a, not a big curry, no, but get yourself ready for the, uh, for the webinar. We'll be going live. Well, we're live now, but we'll be going very, very soon. So uh, let's have a little chat, see people, more and more people coming live online. Any questions, please say hello. If you've got Google, like I say, just drop a line on there and we can uh, we can say hi to you. When everybody's uh, looking like they're getting here, we'll, uh, we'll get started. <laughs> in the room, yeah. We feel the love in the room, it's nice. Don't forget to say hi if you're on there. I can see people saying hi already. Hi, Claire. Hi, Peter. Nice to see you. Hopefully, this will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're a woman in part seven today. Right, we're cracking on. Right, we're cracking on. Yeah, just very, very simple. Thanks very much for tuning in. I'm glad that you're going to take a bit of time out your Thursday, Wednesday evening, even just to, uh, to spend some time with us here at Seriously Connected. I thought it would be really useful to, um, I'm a bit of a walker as well, so if I'm a bit blurry for you and a bit move around, I'm sorry, but I, it's just the nature of that, uh, I can't sit still most of the time. Anyway, so we've been holding some live events in Manchester in the city centre. They've been absolutely brilliant. We've been talking about the recruitment revolution. We've been talking, <coughs> excuse me, about the changes, the way that the whole landscape of employment is changing nowadays. And what is really interesting to me is how people are starting to embrace it and think about it and see what opportunities they've got ahead of them for their own career. So we've been putting some great little events on, we've had some great engagement, but unfortunately, not everybody can make them. So the last, <laughs> I don't know if you tuned into the last one we did in Manchester, we had a technology disaster, but needless to say, we were on Periscope with some people, the screen broke, the laptop broke, everything. So we said we'd host this little webinar for you guys. So this is the very, very first time I've ever done it. My apologies if it goes a little bit pear-shaped, but it should be okay. So we're just doing it for the guys that missed out, and a few of you lucky people as well who uh, who actually were uh, were um, interested just to sign up today and see what we're doing. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the recruitment space. I'm going to talk about being self-employed, but really we're here to find out the top seven things you need to know. If you are thinking about going into recruitment and working for yourself, if you've ever thought Every time you do a deal, I can do this for myself. Or there's that little itch that needs scratching. You just want to know how to do it. I assure you, you will get some absolute nuggets out here. There are the top seven things. There's a few more thrown in. And as you see, I'll add a little bit extra into your per, 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 per your, Hopefully you get some benefit. But get a pen and paper. The slides are really, really simple. But there are notes on there that are going to be really useful to you. So what I'll do is I'll run through them. And then we'll get cracking and hopefully we can have a little chat at the end. Any Q&A, any questions, anything you've got, let me know and I'll dive straight in. So, can we just get started with these slides? Let's do some screen sharing. Let's do some okay, sharing. Okay, everybody, we're hoping for technology gods. Fingers crossed, working. the technology guys are with us. So, let's go. We'll dive one, straight in. One moment. So, 
today? Are we nearly there? Are we live and cooking, as they yeah, say? Yeah, you should be able to see a welcome screen. You should all be able to see a welcome screen. If you can't, please say no. If you can, nod your head. Happy days. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I say, welcome to the Seriously Connected um, top seven tips that you need to know before you start recruiting for yourself. Absolutely critical, critical, critical. And I know because I made most of these mistakes. So I'm here to save you some time and definitely hope we'll get you on the right road. So, welcome, everybody. First of all, I want to just quickly recap where I've come from. I've been in recruitment now since 2001, longer than I ever even cared to remember. About a good few years ago, I decided to set my own business up because for every single time I made a phone call or did a deal, I totally realized I wanted to do it myself. I knew there was a different way. I was frustrated making money for somebody else. I was tired of the wasn't even nine to five, it was like eight to eight every single day of every week, and it used to drive me crazy, but I knew there was a, a way, and I knew I should set my own business up, so I did. I set my own recruitment company, I used an imaginative title, it's called The Debut Consultancy, which actually, you know, that's where it all started. Started up by myself, that's when the problem started, because do you know something? After years and years of fear, suddenly I was into a completely new place of actually knowing nothing about running a business, how to get ahead, how to stay motivated, how to stay focused, but most importantly, how to have an efficient business. And hopefully you'll get some top tips out of this today. So I did it every single day and I'm sure you have too. So let's crack on. So let's get straight to a few home truths, some real, real truths. I've heard some horrendous, horrendous stories over the years about what people say that you can and cannot do to set your own recruitment business. First and foremost, you can. You can do it because if you are recruiting for an agency or a consultancy, call it what you like, if you are recruiting for them, you are doing it already. You just happen to be doing it for somebody else. So in the rule of thumb, generally most recruiters with salary and commission, etc., normally make around 35, 35% of the revenue that they generate. So if you generate £100,000, you get paid approximately 35 to 40,000 pounds. That's the rule of thumb. Now, the 35 grand recruiting for yourself is a breeze. You'd get the sack if you weren't doing it for yourself, if you weren't doing that in an agency. So don't worry whether you think you can or you can't. I assure you, with the right support and, the, and a little bit of effort, you really can get ahead. But what I did and what I do know is that there are companies out there that create some real, real scare tactics, okay? The scare tactics they have are it could cost you. I heard that there's a very, very, very prestigious large recruitment business that say you need to generate over seven, you need to, it costs you, sorry, £7,000 a month to run a recruitment agency. Absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. You can do that for a considerably less amount of money. So don't be over, um, don't be put off by the fact that it could cost you thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. If you do it properly and we'll go through it, you'll realize that there are better ways to spend your money than blowing it. Seven thousand pounds on job boards and so on. But we'll get to that in a moment. So, but also don't be concerned that your clients and your candidates only want to work with the likes of the Michael Pages, the Robert Half, the Reeds, the Rethink, all these great big fabulous recruitment companies, candidates and clients do not care. They don't care whose name is on the business card. They don't care what your email address is. They don't give a monkeys who you work for. They care about you finding them a job. They care about you finding them a candidate. So get past that barrier that you think that you are stuck in agency life because of the boundaries that the recruitment agency is giving you that stop you going to recruit. It's not true. You definitely can do it for yourself. So first things first. Before we get into the top seven tips, and I will rattle through some of these, let's get into the ribs of this. Recruiters generally suffer from what is known as bright, shiny object syndrome. It is simple. Mac books, shiny suits, job boards, all these things that everybody kind of thinks that they need to run a company. You do not need. You do not need any of them. If you've got a laptop and it works, it works, it can do the job. You don't need a new suit. You don't need a new briefcase, a new pair of shiny shoes, a great outfit. You don't need those things. You don't need a job board. You don't need to be spending thousands for CV searching every month and committing your money up front. You don't need them. You need to be sensible with your cash. You need to save your money because in the beginning, 
You are not getting paid, and it's all about getting paid for the work that you do. So keep the money where it belongs, in your back pocket. You can do loads of things nowadays that don't include spending money. There are loads of ways that you can get into LinkedIn, into the internet, into the Google searches. Things like Talent Bear and Social Talent and Recruiting and Profit and uh, Duck Soup. There are loads of those things that you can do. So don't go spending your money on things that you don't need. Stay away from those bright, shiny objects. So, top tip number one, get prepared. Now, like every Boy Scout, you need to be prepared. Now, this is where we get into the top 10 tips. We're going to rattle through the beginning and we get into a little bit more detail. But these top tips are crucial in the beginning. Be prepared. I'm not talking about writing a business plan, but you need to plan your business. You need to plan whether your laptop works. You need to plan whether you've got decent broadband in your house. You need to plan whether your mobile phone has got a great call plan. You need to plan where you're going to work from. Are you going to work from your bedroom? Are you going to work from the loft? Are you going to work from the garage? Are you going to work from the kitchen? Well, that's all great, but are you set up for it? Is it geared for it? What about the dog? Where's the dog going to sit? What about the children and the school run and the kids and the husbands and the wives? You need to get them out of your way. You are now running your own business. And it's critical to get yourself correctly set up. And one thing you need to stay away from is the television. Television will kill your productivity. It will ruin your job to, which is, your job is to recruit. So be prepared, unplug that TV. Get away from all of those things and focus. Get your room and your environment set up. But one thing you really need to do you need to get your finances in order. Now that might sound like common sense, but a lot of people go into this without realizing where they have to spend their money. You have got mortgages and rent and car and credit cards and phone and sky and food and electric, all those things. You now need to know how much money you need to have before you get paid. So the critical factor is work it out. You know what your cost of living is. You know what you can add, uh, what you can take away. You know what you need to earn. You know what your baseline is. And you know how much you need to make per month or how much you need to save, given the fact that you may or may not make any money for 10 to 12 weeks. That is crucial. So be prepared. It is the biggest downfall. Not getting paid on cash flow is the biggest downfall for small recruitment businesses in particular. So I heard recently 62 days is the average debt turnaround in the UK recruitment market. 62 days. I'm convinced it's probably something like 74 myself because little companies don't get paid. So you need to protect yourself. So be prepared. Number two, critical, critical, critical point here. Get expert advice. Now this chap, Albert Einstein, named after my dad, okay? Albert Einstein. He's a clever, clever guy, a mathematician. He is not a recruiter. He is not a painter and decorator. He is an expert. And what I mean by this is, as recruiters, generally, we are not great at most things. Probably recruitment is the number one thing to get yourself set up correctly. Go and see your accountant. Make a best friends with your accountant. Your accountant will be the best decision you ever make. You need to get your legal set up. You need to decide whether you're going to be a limited company. You need to decide whether you want to be a sole trader. And do you know something? There are benefits for and against. Personally, limited company for me all the way, purely and simply because it keeps you and your home away from any risk of any bad debts or anything that may happen within your business. So speak to these people. Get top, top, top advice. Legals, get your company set up straight. Speak to your accountant. Don't. Don't be afraid of asking silly questions. If you think that you can work for companies direct and just go self-employed and only work for one company or one supplier, you're going to be in breach of something called IR35. So make sure you know how many accounts you need and how you can actually operate to be successful. And most importantly, if you're in the UK, get yourself set up for VAT. VAT is absolutely, as a small business, might sound like you've got to make a certain amount of turnover before you can get VAT registered. Rubbish. Speak to your accountant, because I tell you, you can actually make money out of the VAT. Something I guarantee most people don't know. Speak to your accountant and find out about something called the flat rate scheme. 
So get yourself back registered, get yourself prepared and understand IR35, get your legal straight and make friends with an absolute amazing accountant. Go and find those genius people. Top tip, critical. So the next phase, we're actually moving into the phase of actually doing this. But before you leave your job, before you leave your recruitment company, before you do anything, you need to find out what your position is. You need to speak to your clients and find out will they use you. Of course they will, but it's always nice to know. Nine times out of ten, you'll get this response. Of course, Dave. Of course, Claire. Of course, Peter. I will use you because you're a great recruiter for me. I don't care which recruitment company you work for. I don't care which agency you represent. I care about you doing a job for me. It's as simple as that. So speak to your clients. Speak to your candidates. Your candidates, if anybody seen any of the blogs that I've written or any of the Pulse posts that I've got on LinkedIn, you will see my passion for candidates. Candidates, absolutely critical. They are king. They are your product. They are gold. Make sure that you spend time collating those email addresses and those mobile numbers that you've spent oh, months, weeks, years cultivating. Now, I'm not going to tell you that before you leave your business and set up your own recruitment company, I'm not going to tell you that what you should do is go and steal the database from your employer. And I would never do that. But what I will say is you will regret every single time you need a phone number or an email not taking that information with you. If you've worked it, I'm not asking you to say that you should do anything underhand, but if you've nurtured and built those relationships, it's in your best interest to make sure you're able to continue working accordingly. So make sure you collect the right intelligence. Now, I see an awful lot of noise at the moment on LinkedIn, a number of webinars that some of the great people, some great guys out there are talking about. And actually, it's becoming more and more obvious to me, let's be honest. It's about being niche. It's about specializing. It's about being known for what you are absolutely brilliant at. Now, if anybody watching here has known me in a previous life, I've been recruited in the packaging machinery market since 2001. What I don't know about pick and place and thermoform and a vertical form fill and seal, packing chicken, crisps, packs of beef, mint meat, and flipping bottles of Coca Cola just isn't worth knowing. But that's who know my clients know me. I've spent years becoming brilliantly absolute expert at one space. And that's what you need to do. You need to become the go to guy. Now, I don't know if anybody here knows who this particular chap is. I think this chap on the slide now is an absolute genius. This is Felix Baumgartner. Felix is the only man I know that's jumped out of a flipping time capsule a mile high out of the sky and landed safe. Now, if I'm a recruiter, if I'm a candidate or I'm a client and I need to find somebody who knows what it's like to jump out of a flipping time capsule as big as as big as an airing cupboard right, that jumped out and survived. I'm only going one place. I'm going to Felix. He is known all over the world as being that guy. So get to know your space. Be a specialist. Get to know what, get your, let your clients and candidates know what you're good at. Because at the end of the day, you want to make your life easy. Recruiting is all about networks, communication, and actually sitting in the middle of your space, letting it go round and round so that you're able to communicate with the people that know you to make your life easy. You've gone into business to make your life simple. Recruitment agencies don't teach you how to develop your business. They teach you how to make recruitment placements. And that's not what happens when you set your own business. Your aim is to become the number one person, absolute known for everything that you are absolutely known for what you're great at. Chicken, meat, bags of crisps, M&Ms, midget gems. I love M&Ms, midget gems, by the way. Midget gems. This is the space where I am known for. And if you're in IT or financial services, your job is to make your job as easy as possible. So going niche, becoming an inch wide and a mile deep, Knowing, being known for that one space is so much better than doing a little bit here and doing a little bit there. You cannot, you cannot own your space without physically spending time cultivating the people in it. You will end up running off here, there, and everywhere. And that's of no value to anybody. So 
You want to become the hunted, not the hunter. Who wants to be the hunter? Ah, oh, just let everything come to me. It makes life a lot easier. And I'll show you how. This is my only slide that I've got out of our actually onboarding pack that we have when, when people join us here at Seriously Connected. But actually, when round and round in circles within the recruitment space is actually a brilliant way of operating. So if you look at this space, look at this diagram here, or we've got me or you sat in the middle. If you are continually cultivating your relationships and cultivating those conversations, every time you speak to a client, they are, they can or will, or if you've done a great job for them, speak to a future client. They may actually end up becoming a future candidate. They might already be a candidate who's going to recommend you to their boss. They might end up speaking to somebody who is an industry contact that wants to talk to you. But if you stay in and around your world all the time, it should come back to you. It should come back to you. Your skills will mean that you get referred on, referred on. And if you're not getting referred, you need to work harder at following up and completing your assignments and getting great feedback and getting testimonials and referrals of who you can talk to. Would they recommend? Would they use you again? Can you introduce you to somebody? These are the kind of questions that you want to use to become niche because people generally operate in their own world. And if you live over here in the unknown, and I know this because I sat on a beach once and I sat on a beach and sat next to this lovely lady called Angela and she asked me, could I find her an air conditioning engineer, an air conditioning managing director for her engineering business? And I was like, of course I can. I can do that. I came home, we took the brief down, we agreed the fees, I got my signed terms and conditions, and I spent ages looking for somebody. And you know what? I never filled that role because I didn't know the space. And all those contacts that I made trying to find somebody, I've never rang since, ever. So what was the point? I'd rather work in an industry, in a space that I know. I'd rather work in a place that's familiar to me, a place where people know me, a place where I've got recommendation or referrals, or I've got reference sites or history, and people I know I've recruited there before, I've recruited here before, I've worked for this client, that client. You end up building your picture in your world, and clients and candidates love that because it's familiar. They're comfortable in your space because you're talking their language. So immerse yourself in their space. Get yourself in there, stay in there, and go round and round and round to exhibitions, to contacts, to editorials, for magazines, for LinkedIn groups, for anything you can find to give you knowledge about their industry. I promise you, do not be over here in the red dot. Don't do it. Spend time collecting intelligence and becoming the hunted in that space. So here's a little extra cheeky slide I've thrown in for you. I like a little cheeky slide, okay? As I mentioned earlier, when you are running through setting your own business up, if you've worked in agency previously, what will actually happen is they will tell you how to make placements. They will not show you how to cultivate your relationships, how to cultivate those contacts and how to grow your business. Business development when you work for yourself is completely different. Every single call should be absolutely focused on getting an additional email or a mobile number or a referral. I can probably ask five or six questions in one either headhunt call or client call and get four or five extra names without the client even realizing because I'm growing my network, I'm growing my list. And marketers always, always say, grow your list. Now, email marketers are all about as many email addresses as they can get. I don't know whether that's necessarily as applicable to the recruitment space, but your list are your contacts. And the more people you know, the more opportunity you've got of making a placement. So spend time making sure you get to know every single company and potentially every single candidate in that space. Because once you've got that space nailed, you know everybody. Your list is as packed as it can be. And your job is then is to penetrate that list and go round and round and get to know everybody. And it will work for you. Remember, grow your list, make sure you write down and record every email address, every phone number, every name, every position, ask for referrals, grow your list, develop your business at every single opportunity. It's critical. Now, interestingly, this might be a little bit contentious to a lot of people. You see this man here? He's a very youthful looking Richard Branson. 
Now, as I've said here, don't get a website. Why? Because getting a website will not make you a penny. I guarantee you it will not make you a penny in the beginning. And even if you're not one together yourself and you do something online using a WordPress site, it's all of, actually it's of no benefit to anybody. And I don't know why you would spend time and money building a website until you've got traction, until you've got money in the bank to actually prove that A, you can be successful, and B, you've got a website to, that's of quality that people are actually going to look at. If you're growing your list or it's starting off with a very small list, nobody's going to look at your website. SEO and search engines and all this kind of stuff, unless you are a full-on marketer who knows how to keep your company at the top of Google, for instance, it's never going to get found. There's only two people that love that website, and it's you and your mother. Nobody else cares. Absolutely nobody else. So keep the money in your pocket. But what I do recommend that you do is get yourself like a landing page, which will say you can get one really simply. You know, you can go online and find landing pages, and all you have is your company name. And don't go crazy like Blue Moon or Red Banana or Cat Weasel Recruitment. These have no benefit. Call your company. Dave Hume, call your company, Peter Williams, call your company what you are known for. Calling it Experiatis and all these other businesses, there's no value to anybody because nobody's looking for it. Nobody's looking for the name of your company and the name of your kids and the dog with the, you know, the two and a half the names put together. Nobody cares that you've named your company after the name of your house or after your first dog or your first budget. Nobody cares. Spend time giving as much reason why people will find you or see you and using your page your landing page is the simplest thing that you need and as long as it marries up with your email address that you get dead simply off one two three reg or go daddy whatever it is you've got enough um, brand presence there to get started and it's really easy to do because you know something clients and candidates if you're a recruiter the first place that they go to to look at whether you're any good you've got any credibility is LinkedIn LinkedIn, I absolutely do not like LinkedIn, but everybody else uses it as a fabulous reference point. I saw something today that said LinkedIn has become nothing more than a fabulous business card. That's actually really true. So make your business card LinkedIn. It's optimized, it's searchable, you're easily found, everybody knows it, this security, this confidence, this belief in what it says. So what do you do? Have an absolute dynamite kick ass. LinkedIn profile, smash it to pieces, make it the best you can. And there's loads of advice all over it. There are, there are LinkedIn gurus everywhere that will show you how to get a great, um, great LinkedIn profile. Spend time doing it. Don't waste your time on a website. But while we're here, you need to also be thinking about your business different. I know Richard Branson probably has never had a job, so he doesn't know what it's like to leave the security of a full-time wage behind like we all do. But... When you're in that space of recruiting for yourself, start asking yourself some key questions. Think about the assignments that you take on. Think about notice periods. Think about payment terms. Think about the ability to fill that job. Think about how many candidates you're going to have to interview. Think about how easy it's going to be to fill. Don't spend time going, this is a great job. They'll pay me full fee. But most of the people are going to be on six months notice or they're impossible to find. You're never going to get paid. If it takes three months, three months to start an assignment through to interview to actually maybe, maybe we have a successful placement at the end and then you've got to wait three months notice, for instance, there's your six months. But what if then you're on 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? You could be on eight, nine, 10 months before you've got paid for work that you did eight or nine months ago. No, absolutely not. Spend time realizing how quickly I can get paid. You need to close the gap from taking on that piece of work to getting paid the shortest payment terms, the shortest notice period, the ease of finding that candidate. Because if it's difficult and it's trying to find a needle in a haystack, don't. Let somebody else do the hard work. Let the other recruitment companies run around like Wiley Coyote trying to find the answer to their prayers. Go and find the work that you can fill and go and find that work that you can fill fast. There are no prizes for the amount of jobs that you get on. There are no prizes for the amount of interview, uh, the amount of coffees that you have or CVs that you type. There are none. 
So spend time working on the piece of work that you've got and only work on the pieces that are gonna give you value quickly. Don't type every CV up, don't go on every client visit, don't interview every candidate, interview and speak to the ones that are going to drive your boat, that are gonna get you moving faster, that are gonna make you closer to doing that deal. Spend time understanding what is in front of you and how quickly you can get paid. So. One thing I will say is that one thing that you need to really work on, because there are no KPIs as a self-employed recruiter, but the only KPI you need to look at is first interviews. So if you're thinking like Richard Branson, how can I get customers to buy my product? Very simply, interviews. Arrange as many interviews as you can. That is the only KPI I recommend. Don't care about jobs or candidates. KPIs that count are first interviews. So that's what Richard would tell me if he was here right now. But he's not. <laughs> okay, now, this is a massive gripe of mine, an absolute huge, huge, huge gripe of mine. And I know probably 80, 90% of new recruitment companies out there have stolen the terms and conditions from their previous employer. Absolutely no. No, no, no. First of all, it's stealing, okay? Secondly, how do you know they're even right? Have you ever read them? Have you ever gone through them? Have you ever explored them? I could tell you a lovely story about two guys that I knew, right, a couple of years ago that came to talk to us and they had terms and conditions, okay, that they borrowed from somewhere else. And I hear lots of recruiters say, oh, I've written these myself. Oh, yeah, because you're a full-blown solicitor as well. But these two guys came to see, came to see us and they sat down and they had two, um, so they had, their, their payment terms were split into two sections. You would pay, 5% of the fee when the candidate started and 5% of the fee after 30 days. Okay, that's lovely, but what about the other 90% of the fee? Pardon? What about the other 90% of the fee when I read the terms and conditions? And they were like, well, what do you mean? Well, they were only asking for 10% of the fee that they charged. Unfortunately, fortunately for them, their clients were paying it because they'd not read the terms and conditions neither. But the right thing to do is get your own terms and conditions and get them written for you properly that you own, that you can do, that you can stand by your terms and conditions because actually stealing your own and old employers, A, it's wrong. B, if you're going to start off in business, do it properly. And secondly, like I say, it's stealing. So don't do it. Otherwise, I'm sending Judge Judy around. She'll have you. Now, I don't know if my mother's watching, but she might be, so I apologize now in advance for what I'm gonna say now. I'm gonna try and avoid saying it actually, but going low on price is a big fat no, okay? Now, it might be slightly contentious, and my apologies for people who are offended, but you're not supposed to be. Now, the reason why I say this, everybody's been in a shop or ordered a meal or they've been to buy a car or have a holiday or look at a house and they've been quoted a price and they muttered under their breath, oh, I'm not paying that, okay? And everybody has a price. We have a price as people, but employers and clients have a price themselves. But you need to know the value of your work. Now, if you were recruiting within an agency at X percent, whether it's 15% at the high street or 20, 25, 30% for agency with specialist consultants, you were worth that price then and you're worth that price today. And in this candidate driven market, the talent shortage means that you really should stand by your guns. And I'm a massive believer and I'm not a lover of like negotiating in particular, because if you're gonna charge 19, 20%, then charge 20%, don't start at 25 and come down. It's not the okey cokey, it's not a charade. Go in with your price and go, that's my price, take it or leave it. But if you're negotiating, there needs to be something in it for you. Exclusivity, retained assignment, more work, short payment terms. But whatever you're doing, make sure you know your price. Think about your price. Because you know something? I've got a little phrase. If it's too low, I say no, <laughs> which I don't. But that's, the point is, you've got to stand by your guns. You've got to know where your price is. And if people will say, I'm only going to take this. Why do you think previously you had to speak to your MD to get your sign off for any negotiated terms? Because no is the answer. You're worth that price. Do your job properly. Be proud of the fees that you charge. And if you're going to, going to reduce your fees, you've got to decide, is it really, really worth it? Maybe you can work with a budget as opposed to a percentage. Maybe that's a way forward. But you know something? 
if you, they're going to go down to the 12, 10 percent and 15s and 18 percent that you're not happy with, leave it to somebody else. Leave that work to somebody else. Somebody else is getting paid to do that work. You are not. You are to choose whether you're going to accept that price. So know what your off price is, know what it is, and stick to it. Because there becomes a point when you spend ages working on a piece of work, and you go, why am I even doing this for this kind of money? And you'll resent it. So don't be afraid to walk away. Remember, have your price and stick to it. So they were my seven crucial, critical things. I'm going to go on to a little bit more in a moment, but I want to just quick recap. So remember, do, these are my top tips, do get prepared. Do do your homework. Do do everything that it makes to make sure that you give yourself the best start in the beginning. Expert advice. Make your accountant your best friend. Speak to a solicitor. Everybody knows an accountant. Everybody knows a recruiter. Speak to them. Get expert advice. Understand about VAT, IR35, limited companies, sole trader. Get to know this. Collect your data. Oh, knowledge is power. We, we've heard that phrase before. Information, information, information. You can never have too many email addresses or too many phone numbers. Collect the data from day one and don't ever stop. Specialize. Niche is nice. Inch wide, mile deep. Get known for being brilliant at one thing. Remember, I know the red meat and poultry sector in the packaging machinery world like nobody else. That's what I'm known for. Your job is to become the same in your industry. Don't get a website. Don't spend money on stuff you don't need. Don't worry about the IOR and the REC and job boards. Don't go that way. Spend money on the right things and that, the things that are going to add value to your business and make you money quicker. Do not use old terms and conditions. Do not steal them. I cannot stress this enough. Do not steal them. It's illegal. Do the right thing. Start your business as you mean to go on. Get your own written. And then my favorite one, again, as where it looks like a very young Katie Price there, don't go low on price because once you drop your prices, you very, very rarely can go back to what you feel that you're worth and you'll probably lose that client or you'll get frustrated recruiting for them. Stay away from the price conversation. Price is only an issue in the absence of value. So add as much value to that relationship and that client and that candidate as you ever can. Add value. And then lastly there, Never, ever, ever give up. You keep going, keep going, because if you've done it before, you can keep doing it now. Simple as that. Now, what I want to actually quickly go through in a quick recap here is the reason why you're probably on this webinar is because you're thinking about setting your own business up or you're thinking about it or you're frustrated about it. But let me tell you something. One thing that agencies are frightened to death of, agencies are dying out. They are now no longer needed. They are becoming obsolete. They are now a link in the chain that's not necessary. You, the recruiter, you hold all the power. You are the ones in charge. You are the ones who own the relationship. The clients come to you. The candidates come to you. Yours is where yours is the trust base that they've got. Agencies are dead. Uber's proven it. Uber have removed the taxi company out of it. Airbnb have removed the, the high street travel agency out of it. Amazon are removing out of it the, um, the high street stores. It's happening everywhere. And if statistics and what the forecasts are correct, by 2020, four in 10 people will work for themselves. And that means four in 10 recruiters are going to be working for themselves. That's four out of the 10 people watching this now. Simple as Oh, it's happening. The agency is on its way out. The agency needs you a lot more than you ever, ever need them. You can do it on your own. Do not think you can't. You can. Get the right support around you. Get the right advice and just go for it. Now, probably coming across with a little bit of a passion about how I feel about agencies and how I want people to get businesses set up straight. We recognized a few years ago that great recruiters don't need to be employed anymore. And this is a picture of me and my partner, my business partner, Kat Marshall, here when we were in Manchester City Centre when we were just getting going. But we know that there's a better way for recruiters. And not every recruiter wants to be on their own. They don't all want to be independent, but they don't need to be employed anymore. So we help them escape agency life, use our branding, use our services, use our funding, use our invoices, our platform. We provide all those things that I've been saying to you to you need to be careful of. We provide your 
your online profile, your terms and conditions, your email address. We provide you know, the material to get yourself faster. And our focus is to help your, you independent recruiters. Don't worry about being building an agency because unless you want to have an agency, then what are you doing? You're just freelancing. You're just working for yourself. So join a business where everybody's doing the same thing. Our recruiters all plug in, work with Seriously Connected. We take away all the messy bits. We take away all the trouble, all the, the debts and the credit control and the invoicing and websites and and our focus is help you grow your independent business and be successful. We're here to support specialists. Our recruiters are all an inch wide and a mile deep. Some of them might need to go on a diet, but they're all an inch wide and a mile deep. You know, We help them define their niche. We help them get focused. We help them present their value to the client and be successful. It's critical. And we love it. We know that this is the future. And we know that this way of operating is going to happen more and more for specialist recruiters like you. So if you want to find out more, you want to know what's happening out in the world, give us a call. We can help. We know how to run recruitment businesses. We've built loads. We're helping recruiters do really, really well. We're helping them make successful placements. I was going to show you a video about one of our guys, Chris, who through one of the programs we ran, got an offer of a £19,000 fee. 19,000, 20, was it 29,000, sorry, 29,000 pound fee. Okay, he did negotiate down to 19 grand, but hey, that, we'll let him off for that. And I'll send you the link out, I'll send you on the email so you can have a look what it feels like. Recruiting for yourself is the most rewarding thing you will ever, ever have. And I assure you, with the right support, you can be super successful. And we're really excited about what the future holds for recruiters. We're absolutely committed to helping you avoid all of these obstacles that we've been talking about through all of this. So look at those top seven tips that we've been talking about if you're interested in finding more about seriously connected we've got an amazing new platform being launched at the back end of march beginning of april you know if you're interested to find out more we need to sign up and send some details click on the link get the info pack and we'll send you plenty of information what it's like to be seriously connected how you can use your expertise as an as a recruiter to go independent and make more money than you've ever made to stop lining somebody else's pockets to keep that share of the fee and actually have a flexible lifestyle to work around you and your family that allows you to live how you want and we want to encourage that more the merrier if by 2020 four in ten recruiters are going to be self-employed we want to help you and if that's you get involved today download the info pack and let us show you how we can help and that kind of is my very, very first webinar that I've done live for all you guys that should have been along to us at the live events. So, <laughs> that's harder than it thinks, harder than it looks actually. So I'm a little bit dry now, so please forgive me, but hey, I hope you had a great time. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm absolutely serious about what we're doing. Here at Seriously Connected, we have learned the hard way I talk about all of those things on the slides from a place of pain myself. I know exactly what it's like not to get paid. I know what it's like to actually, I didn't steal the terms and conditions, but to go and speak to a solicitor to learn about terms and conditions and understand. And I'm pretty astute with finances and stuff, but I knew nothing about the VAT. And I didn't know about the difference between well, limited company and sole traders. And I didn't know what it's like to go niche and focus, but actually, I also realize it's quite hard being independent. You've got nobody around you. When you're in the office, you've got people there. But when you work for yourself, you've got nobody. So there's probably another, another webinar about what, how you would actually build your community and build the people around you because that is just as important as well. And that's what we've done. We're bringing together recruiters all around the UK. We provide those expert help. We provide those genius people. We provide top level accountants for you with the great terms and conditions and your online platform. We help you get your business out there and grow it by allowing you to focus on the things that matter. And that's making money. Do what you do best. Recruit. Let us do the rest. But whatever you decide to do, do it properly. But don't be afraid. Time flies by. And the one thing I realized when I was recruiting when I started, before I started setting my own business up, I was frightened to death, absolutely frightened to death to do it. But you know something, after four years of worrying about it, when I decided to do it, and then I did it, it's the best thing I ever, I ever best decision by a country mile I ever made. 
and I encourage you to have the courage to go and do it. What's the worst that's going to happen? You've got to go and get a job. What if you can really do it? What if you become super successful? I hope you do. Now, if we're not connected on LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn. If you've not seen the info pack, have a little look. I'm waving my hands around again, but have a little look. It's really useful. It'll show you how you can get on and the kind of things that we provide. But look out for some of the stuff that we've got in, on Independent Recruiter on the blog and there's some interesting stuff. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Look out for the webinar that we might hold again, maybe. Come along to the events in Manchester and we'll send that little YouTube clip of Chris and Work Light to do a fantastic deal. So listen, guys, thanks very much for your time. I feel like I've talked at you for, uh, for a good old while. Have a lovely evening. I hope you've enjoyed it. Go and get yourself another cup of tea. I'm off for a brew. I'll speak soon.